Oh, well, hello there, all you Brewgrass connoisseurs, and welcome to the first episode of the Brewgrass Vino Club. We love making beer. We make a lot of beer around here with you guys. Um, but we are trying to learn more about wine in 2024. Uh, I know a fair bit about it. I got my, got my whole start in this, making wine with my dad when I was a kid. And I would go to his kind of some of his like snooty like wine tasting meetings and stuff. Sometimes I would pour the wine, and like I think I gave an old lady a glass like that one time, and she was like Lu full Lucille, Lucille Bluth, like, "Oh no, I'll have one that your thumb wasn't touching." If I wanted something your thumb touched, I'd eat the inside of your ear. But here we like to keep things very low key. We're gonna try to learn more about styles ourselves, hopefully share with you. And one of the nice things about it is with all your equipment that you use to make beer. All you really need is a corker instead of a capper, and you can uh, knock out batches of wine like it ain't nothing. It almost feels like cheating at some point. Um, to get things started, it's one of my favorite red wines. It's really nice for the winter. Uh, the kind of classic, very, very old style of Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, Cabernet Sauvignon is natively, or originally, a French wine, obviously. And it's kind of unique because it's a hybrid between two really old cultivars. Uh, I believe it's the Cabernet uh, Franc and the Sauvignon Blanc grapes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, those got cross-pollinated, interbred, and produced the Cabernet Sauvignon grape. What's unique about that grape is that it grows really, really well in colder climates. So a lot of the traditional wines that you drink, you know, those grow right around the Mediterranean region. Um, when the climate gets a little colder, if you go further in coast or further north, those those varieties don't do so well. But the Cabernet Sauvignon thrived there. And what's unique about a grape that grows in a cooler climate like that is that it creates more of a balance. Winemaking, it's all a balance between kind of sweetness and tannin development and the retention of acidity. And that kind of determines how flavors mingle and age over time. Um, Cabernet Sauvignon, because it does grow in cooler climates, cooler climates tend to retain acidity longer, so you can keep the grapes on the vine later into the season, which develops more sugar, more flavor, but still retains that lighter, brighter acidity. They also have much thicker grape skins, so when you do harvest them and process them, you get a lot more of that kind of rich tannin-y uh, essence that comes through. They migrated over and they actually ended up growing really well in Napa Valley too. So I know a lot of really good Cabernet Sauvignons come out of Napa these days. And I think there's a really good uh, Chilean uh, region for um, Cabernet Sauvignons as well. But that lends itself to when you actually end up making the wine, it's a very rich, but still fairly dry. Uh, it's not gonna be kind of as like rich, meaty, robust as like a Merlot. Um, when I smell it, it really just smells like dark cherry juice uh, with a little bit of kind of brighter stone fruit or some, you know, jammy aromas kind of coming through. Uh, this one's nothing fancy and it's fairly young. But the cool thing about Cabernet Sauvignon, because of that blend of acidity and tannin, it ages incredibly well uh, and it develops much more nuance than um, some of the, I'm going to say more basic styles because this is our snooty wine corner uh it gets really really earthy oaky tanniny as you let it get six seven eight nine months of age on it if you did want to age it in some wood that makes it even better pairs really nicely with kind of rich uh meats you know think things like lamb or uh marinated beef or funky cheeses uh, if you're into that kind of stuff we certainly are here Makes great gifts, too. So if you guys are curious about wine like we are, we're going to try to introduce ourselves. Um, I was doing a bunch of research on this today, and I just dived as deep into that stuff as I do with any kind of beer thing. It was very, very fun to learn more. We'll try to share that with you guys as the months go on. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't tried a Cabernet Sauvignon, go try one. And if you want a whole bunch of it, try making one at home. It's very easy, very good, very rewarding. Thank you all very much for watching the first episode of the Brewgrass Vino Club. If you have a style that you'd like to learn more about with us or see us talk about, leave a comment down below. As always, thank you all very much for watching. Brew something awesome.